what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide for Boudica in rise of kingdoms now the last couple of videos on this channel have been about kvk and the drama surrounding that and we talked about some legendary commander guides on this channel and i wanted to bring it back to kind of the uh the, the bread and butter of what i was doing on this channel a couple of weeks ago which was giving free to play guides for players who are using epic commanders and kind of telling them exactly what i think about them and what they are good for and so Boudica is a commander that i haven't made a specific video for i think a lot of people um have her and are using her but i think that her role has changed a lot since the game first came out especially from the early game to the late game i think her role changes pretty drastically and so i wanted to make a video talking about her now if you're brand new to the game then Boudica is the commander that you get with the british civilization you can also get her from silver keys gold keys the expedition shop you can convert universals into her and you can get her from different events as well like the British event now at quick glance we can see she has the integration tree the peacekeeping tree and the skill tree now we do like the skill tree quite a bit on this channel we talk about it a lot but we haven't uh, talked too much about the integration tree so let me talk to you guys a little bit about this tree specifically the um, the theme of this tree is having a, a mixed army with three or four different troop types there is yes there is a buff for siege in here unfortunately uh, but regardless I I'm not a huge fan of this tree and so we're going to talk a little bit about talent trees in a minute but that's part of the reason why i think Boudica's uh, use falls off pretty uh, pretty substantially in the later game now she does have some use in like kvk1 and things like that because at that point a lot of players who don't spend a lot of money may have uh, they don't have really have that many expertise to epic commanders or they just can't fill uh, five armies with good commanders and Boudica on paper looks very very good and again in the early game she is she's a good commander she's very well-rounded she doesn't care about a specific troop type however in the late game we can start to see why her usage falls off and why she's just not that great now one thing that i will note about Boudica, and we're going to jump into her skills now is that she is a nice debuffing commander and she does support your army really really well and what do i mean by that well her first skill is called lament of the insurgent and this is a active skill that has a rage requirement of 1000 it says it deals a massive damage factor of 1000 to the target and reduces its rage by 100 decreases attack of target troops by 25 percent for the next two seconds so what we see here is a really nice single target damage factor right we look at somebody like osmond the first who has the highest single target damage factor in the epic tier and it's 1100 so what we're seeing here is the 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 direct damage factor is slightly less than the best in the tier however you are getting a rage reduction of a thousand which is nice and decreasing the attack by 25 percent is is nice it's a nice little debuff right her next skill is called group battle this is the peacekeeping skill that she has it increases damage dealt to barbs and neutral units by 25 percent and increases the experience gained by your commanders by 20 percent which makes her the third best peacekeeper in the game right you first have um lohar obviously then you have ethel flood um lohar gives you 70 percent extra experience ethel flood gives you 35 percent extra experience and Boudica now gives you 20. so she's a great peacekeeper for this second skill and if you're going to level her up in the early game i would say get this first skill to five then get this second skill to five and then bring her all the way to four stars her third skill is called celtic blood and it says Boudica restores 50 rage and heals some of the slightly booted units with a healing factor of 400 in her army whenever she uses the skill so this is nice she has a built-in rage engine right on her third skill and that's going to help her pop off her active skills more often which means she's going to get even more rage and she's going to heal even more which is really really good this is great if you pair her with another commander that has some sort of rage regeneration like uh Sun Tzu who also does some nice skill damage so that's a really nice skill to see and then her final skill is called Queen of the ice and I, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but essentially you have a 10% chance of dealing extra damage for one turn. So it says your normal attacks have a chance to increase the damage dealt to the enemy as follows. And then there's a 5% chance of an extra 50%, a 3% chance of an extra 100% and a 2% chance of an extra 150%. So on average you're probably going to double your damage for a turn maybe you get a little bit more than that um, but regardless this is a nice skill um you do get a, a nice amount of extra damage but it is only for one turn so that is worth noting and finally her expertise literally is just changing her first skill so normally it's a 600 damage factor when she's expertise it's a thousand so that's a nice change you do get a nice damage factor buff there which is good and so let's talk about her role right she obviously has some nice single target damage factor but she really is debuffing with this primary skill 
and she's also going to give you extra rage and heal a little bit so this is more of like a support skill as well so when we compare her to other commanders that you may have as free to play or a low spender or in the early game um you may compare her to somebody like ethel flood which you know if you're in like kvk1 you're not going to have an expertise ethel flood um she does have a much better debuff right not only is her damage factor almost the same but it's an aoe and a half circle shaped area which is amazing and the debuff is 30 percent instead of 25 and it's attack defense and health whereas Boudicca's is just 25 percent to attack so this is a way better debuff right way way better also for two seconds now we can also look at somebody like Belisarius who's also an epic commander his primary skill also has a single target damage factor of 450 which is much less than Boudicca's obviously but his debuff is a 30 percent attack reduction and a 30 percent defense reduction for the same amount of time for two seconds so when we're talking about debuffing um Belisarius and uh Ethel fled both uh, commander that you can use as free to play are arguably better in that regard now i will say obviously Boudicca does lower their rage by 100 which is impactful um the more that this goes off the more you're reducing their rage which is nice but i just don't know if that debuff being weaker than the others uh is is going to make up for it right that's that's the problem that i have with Boudicca. now the other thing that's missing in her skills here is a buff to a specific troop type so if we look at somebody uh like kusunoki for example he obviously gives you 30 percent of archer stats you look at somebody like Pilar he gives you 30% of cavalry stats. You can look at most of the commanders in the epic tier. Um, they give you 30% of stats for a specific troop type, like Olji, who gives them to infantry. And so this is something that's missing from Boudicca. So when you're pairing her with somebody, you have to realize that your stats of your troops on the battlefield are just going to be lower. And that's unfortunate because when you look at her third skill, like, yes, you are healing more and you are restoring rage more, but you do, you'll probably have a, a pretty big stat disadvantage if you're going up against maybe let's say a Pelagius by bars for example by bars gives you 20 percent extra attack on top of Pelagius is 30 percent so really th that's the problem with Boudicca is that the stat difference is going to be pretty substantial even though she has a nice single target damage factor she has an okay debuff um, that you know we kind of talked about that already um, and she does have a chance of doing extra damage for a turn but I don't think that that makes up for the fact that she doesn't have a significant amount of stats that she's offering to that army and so what is the mean for Boudicca well like I said earlier she's good in the early game she's good in kvk1 to a degree because she you know she's a universal commander who doesn't care about a specific troop type and so when you're trying to build your armies to send out into the open field if you just have extras left over of other troops you can fill an army with Boudicca and you're not losing out on anything that she could potentially offer if you filled her with a specific troop type and so that's really useful to know for her especially in the early game it's going to be hard to fill five armies with all of a specific troop type that just requires a lot of troops and you know kvk1 comes relatively quickly so from her relatively modest role in kvk1 where she is debuffing dealing damage to single targets having a mixed army and just doing generally okay um in the late game and even by kvk2 you shouldn't really be using Boudicca, right because again she's missing a lot of those stat buffs and you know the 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 benefits of Boudicca aren't really outweighing uh outweighing the cons right and, and the other thing too is like even though what you're seeing on the skills aren't that bad you it's you're gonna struggle to find somebody to pair her with right and that's the other thing where if you're looking at Sun Tzu obviously you can pair him with Ethel Fled, which is great you have Herman uh Herman and Kusunoki you can pair together you have Pelagius and either Bybars or Belisarius which you can pair together and then you have Joan of Arc um which you could pair with somebody like Scipio who's really tanky or you could pair her with Boudicca I suppose if you wanted to uh, but that's up to you uh, you know who you want to pair them with but really like I said the, the commanders that you that you're really going to be using in the epic tier already have a better pair they don't really need Boudicca right so you could technically pair her with Kusunoki because like she's not going to take away from the uh the archer stats you could send Kusunoki and Boudicca with a full archer army and that would be okay with Kusunoki primary because he has the archer tree but the thing is you, the opportunity cost of using Boudicca is too high meaning what you could be using in her place is probably going to be better just like Herman right he has uh he has a, a better single target damage factor also with that rage reduction and a second uh, silence for two seconds so 
that's kind of the problem that Boudica runs into it's it's not that she's necessarily bad and like I said she's good on paper it's just that she does she can't really take the place of somebody else now you could technically pair her with somebody like Osmond because they both just have big single target damage factor she's giving him rage regeneration that he wants she's also doing the debuffing and, and all that other good stuff um, plus Osmond likes the extra damage factor here but again the, the issue with Boudica is that she she the opportunity cost is is too high to really use her so over time her use really falls off really really fast uh, in my opinion i just i just can't see a world where Boudica is going to be in your strongest army you know what i mean um i just i just can't really see that based on her skills alone um so what that makes her is a is a good peacekeeper in the late game and that's why you see her at level 60 for me she's she's great for peacekeeping she deals extra damage to them she uh heals as well she has rage uh, regeneration and so she's good for leveling up other commanders in the late game um but again it's just it's difficult to kind of recommend her for pvp now let's say you're a brand new uh, player you're going into kvk1 and let's say for whatever reason you do want to use Boudica and you want to use her in a PVP scenario and you totally could like I said she's not awful you could do that in the early game so who would you pair her with well the first thing I would note is that I don't really think she should be the primary commander because we've talked about the integration tree I'm not a huge fan of it it's just it's very um it feels spread thin right you're getting some buffs to all troop types whereas I want to maximize the amount of buffs for one troop type and so what I would recommend is probably having Boudica as the secondary um in that army and you know you could pair her with somebody like Sun Tzu uh, I think that's a pretty good pair as well if you don't have like a maxed out Ethel fled or a usable Ethel fled or anything like that then her, her with Sun Tzu is pretty good because they both have rage regeneration they both do nice skill damage and you know Sun Tzu doesn't really care about a specific troop type although I would recommend probably full infantry if you're gonna use Boudica as secondary because you do have the infantry tree with Sun Tzu you're also gonna get the skill damage bonus from Sun Tzu that will apply to Boudica's uh, primary skill which I think is really really good so that's something that you could do and again you could kind of make the argument that you could pair her with anybody because she doesn't really care like as long as they deal skill deal skill uh deal skill damage um there's really not a, a reason why you couldn't pair her and have decent synergy it's just a matter of like just probably a better choice than Boudica um you could also pair her with somebody like Scipio and the reason for this with the Scipio primary is that he is a bit more tanky than some of the other commanders in the epic tier and that's going to keep Boudica alive for a while and that's going to cause her to continuously debuff the target in the open field that's what she's pretty much good at um, also she's going to restore some rage for Scipio which is something that he lacks and so that's gonna cause his active skill to pop off more and more and he's bringing more troops to the battlefield which adds to the tankiness which is really really good plus he doesn't care about a specific troop type either so you really could pair her and him together and then put just a bunch of different troops in there from different troop types and that won't really have an effect on the effectiveness of that army you could also pair her with Joan of Arc Joan of Arc is also a very supportive commander I would recommend Joan of Arc probably as the primary um, because I do like the rage generation on the support tree the only problem with this pairing is that Joan of Arc doesn't have skill damage and she also lacks the tankiness of Scipio which that's kind of his redeeming factor for not having skill damage and so what you have here is a super supportive army right Joan of Arc obviously like the best support commander in the game you have Boudica who is going to be debuffing the target but the problem with this pair is that they're going to be super squishy and a big target in the open field and so you're probably not going to have too much success there but they do have synergy and you could do it right you could do it if the players you're fighting against are relatively inexperienced they may not really understand what that army is doing and it can do some serious work on the battlefield in the early game like I said we're talking kvk1 and earlier um that's a pairing that could possibly happen again we talked about Ozma. I think there's some really good synergy here I think this might be one of the best pairings because they do have nice single target damage factor and that's really what they're doing most right you have Osman prime primary because of the leadership tree and you bring extra troops and you're just dealing a ton of skill damage with the debuffs from Boudica as well really great pairing uh finally I want to talk about Belisarius you could do a Belisarius primary and a Boudica secondary and what this is going to do if you have full calves is you're going to have a very fast march out on the open field and you're going to be able to de uh, debuff things very quickly so you can get from your city to the army you want to debuff or the flag you want to debuff or whatever very very fast and 
these uh, debuffs are not going to stack so if you guys didn't know the way that debuffs work in this game um, if a debuff is applied to a target that is less than a debuff that is already applied it doesn't have any effect so for example if you have Belisarius hitting a target and applies a 30% attack reduction and then your ally comes in and hits them with Boudica who applies a 25% attack reduction you would think that it would be a 55% attack reduction total for the duration of those skills but unfortunately the game just sees okay 30 is bigger than 25 and so that's the debuff that we're going to favor and that's how the damage formula actually works so when you pair Belisarius and Boudica um, they both have a two second debuff and what's interesting about that is that the debuffs while they don't stack they actually follow one another and so there's no overlap if we take a look at in my um if we take a look in the battle log here i just went with an ethel fled who also has a two second uh, debuff we can see around uh turn what is it 12 we see um ethel fled she uses the um, arrow of iron sorry she uses it on turn 11 which gives you the 30 percent debuff for turn 12 and then 13 is the last turn that they have a 30 percent debuff and that's also the turn that the active skill of Boudica goes off and then the turn after that is when they get the 25 percent debuff from Boudica. so again the debuffs do not stack but um one can follow the other so you're getting four total seconds of debuffing now it Boudica's debuff is going to be not as good as Belisarius's or as Ethel Fled's, um, but it is still four seconds of debuff, which is really, really nice. And it's the best case scenario because again, there's no way to actually stack them. So you might as well just have it continuously up instead of stacking. I think that's a good option. And so you, again, you could use Belisarius primary, Boudica secondary. Um, also, because if you're having a full um, cavalry army for damage dealing, it's usually a Pelagius and Bybars, which means you're going to have Belisarius kind of just left there kind of doing nothing. And so you could have a nice fast debuffing army with these two. And they are both peacekeepers as well. Something that's worth noting, uh, something of uh, no, something noteworthy is that they are both peacekeepers. So you could do that if you really want to, uh, you really want to kill barbs very, very fast for maybe a particular event or something along those lines. But I think that that's a pretty good pairing as well. Now, if we're talking about equipment for Boudica, you know, she's going to be in an army. She's probably going to be your secondary. Um, and because of that, the equipment doesn't really matter. But if you are going to do it, I would recommend just putting equipment on her that increases the most amount of stats for the most amount of commanders. Obviously this here is not a good example example because I don't actually use her for PVP so I don't waste any good equipment on her but if we look at somebody like my Martel obviously he has something like the staff of the loss which gives you nice stats to all troop types which is really really good you look at something like Grease of the exile same thing you get six percent of stats which is nice you can look at um, also the infantry uh, breastplate that gives you four percent of stats which is really good so again you want to spread those stats across all troop types if she's gonna be the primary and it's a mixed army that's those are the types of uh, equipment that you want to use for Buddha now let's look at some of her um, skill or talent trees sorry there's again a, you're not probably gonna use her as a primary in the open field and because of that I have her built for peacekeeping now this is the build that I currently have this is not the best build if you want to peacekeep I'm just gonna be upfront with you guys you probably want to go all the way to the end of the peacekeeping tree um, that's probably your best bet I would go ahead and do that and then um, you can go over here and grab rejuvenate for the extra rage and then grab clarity for the extra skill damage for you know if your secondary has has active skill damage that's nice but you're also getting some nice talents over here with heraldic shields and tactical master mastery you also get the rage regeneration of burning blood and you also get all for one which is really really good so there's a lot to love about this build for killing barbarians now if you were going to use her as a primary for pvp which i don't recommend we've talked about this i don't really recommend it this is probably the build that i would do i would go all the way to the end of the skill tree get feral nature to five then you can make your way into the integration tree grabbing all the talents up front the only reason we're grabbing the defensive formation for siege is because we need to in order to get fresh recruits which will increase the amount of troops you can bring to the battlefield now if you know you're going to use a mixed army you could take some of these points like i have one point here for march speed and i have one point here for health of all troops you could take those points out and put them in armored to the teeth because i think that that's a very good talent but if you're going to be using a specific um troop type like let's say it's going to be all cavalry or something like that you're not going to want to waste your points on armor to the teeth so it's up to you again this is not i, I just I'm not a huge fan of the of the uh, integration tree and because of that I just can't really like I can't really recommend using her as a primary but if you were going to and you have a single unit type this is what I would do if you have a mixed unit army then I would take this point out I would take this point out and I probably would take 
maybe two points out of this and put all four of those into armor to the teeth that way um, you can reduce damage taken by four percent which I think is pretty good you still get the March speed here with uh, I think one point so yeah it's or yeah one or two points but it's it's a good uh, it's a good option again I don't think she should be primary but for those of you that are curious and you want to use her as a primary for PvP in the early game this is something that you can consider but for killing barbs this is probably your best bet in my opinion I think it's just got the obviously the full peacekeeping tree but you also get rage regeneration and you also get a little bit of clarity as well with that being said if you made it all the way to the end of the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video i really really do appreciate that comment down below anything that i may have missed about Boudica, any combinations that you personally use or any questions that you still have about her i will be more than happy to answer all of that for you down below all my social media links are in the description below if you want to follow me on instagram and twitter my discord is down there to keep in touch with me i also have my twitch channel down there as well i do try to stream uh, rise of kingdoms a couple of times every single week so make sure you go and drop a follow down there my new merch is out so link will be in the description as well you may even see it beneath this video and finally if you want to play rise of kingdoms on your pc or your mac there's a link in the description where you can download the game for free on blue stacks and it's my favorite way to play i think it was the best uh, option that i had during kvk with the least amount of lag and crashes so definitely give that a try link will be in the description below again it is free and you can download it right to your computer if you new around here make sure to subscribe to the channel click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace